Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready for the event. CBS News, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Bill Harwood, CBS News. How do you hear me? Hey, Bill, we have you loud and clear. Hey, thanks a lot. It's uh, great to see you guys today. I appreciate you taking the time. You know, there's an enormous amount going on in space right now. You know, China launched its first space station module last night. Uh, NASA's moving the SLS core stage over to the VAB as we speak this morning. And, of course, you guys are settling in aboard ISS. The Crew-1 guys are getting ready to come home. So, Shane, how's it going for you and your crew? The station's changed a bit since you were there back in 2016. What are your impressions this time around? Hey, thanks for the question, Bill. It's great to be back on station. It's great to be floating around again. All of us are really enjoying that, learning how to fly and relearning how to fly. So that's been fun. Uh, a lot of people up here, as you alluded to. Uh, right now we have 11 on board. And it's been really a lot of fun uh, learning from the folks that have been on board for a while and learning all the new things. It hasn't changed a whole lot uh, since I was here last time. The uh, stowage situation is a little bit worse, but in general, not too bad. But uh, the resources now are the issue because there's only ones of certain things, and uh, we have a lot of people to use those one things. So uh, it's been really fun, though. We're um, excited for Crew-1 to head back home here pretty soon whenever the weather allows. Megan, how about you? Your, only, your previous flight was just aboard a space shuttle. Great mission with Hubble, but this is your first time aboard station. What are, what are your thoughts? Uh, that's right, Bill. This is my first time uh, to the space station. And, uh, you know, first impression, of course, is that the living space is much, much bigger. Uh, it's a lot more room to move around. And so you really have to be, uh, you, you have to be precise with your flying uh, as, so as not to crash into all the other people that are up here. And, of course, there's lots of stuff up here, too. So I'm, uh, I'm learning how to fly. It feels really good. And uh, it's just an amazing, amazing place. I'm learning new stuff, uh, you know, every day. You know, my daughter and I were watching a bird fly over our driveway the other night, and I said something like, man, I sure wish I could do that. Is that, is that what it's like on board station in zero-G? It, it really is a lot of fun. Um, it's, uh, you know, of course, w one of the things you might make a mistake when you get your body far away from, from anything to push off, your, your natural instinct is to kind of try to swim or to fly. Of course, that does not work, uh, just pushing against the air with our arms. And so you really, you learn that it just takes a little bit of force to move your body kind of from one side to another. And uh, one of my crewmates encouraged me to learn to walk across the floor of the lab, um, just to, you know, to sort of practice that uh, careful movement. And that's been a lot of fun to practice doing that, uh, just hooking my feet under the different handrails and walking across as if I was on earth. So it's, it's fun to try out new things and just to learn how to move really carefully in this environment. I haven't practiced you know, flips yet, though. <laughs> you know, uh, lots of folks down here are interested in descriptions of what it's like to ride a Falcon 9 and a Crew Dragon into space just, just because it's a new vehicle. C can you guys give us maybe a sense of what it's like, uh, what that ride uphill is like, the vibration, the noises, you know, the, the jerk when it stages, that sort of thing? Can you kind of give us a, a description? I'll try to, Bill. It's going to be hard, but... Uh... So we were sitting on the launch pad, obviously, and when the engines lit, uh, we all started laughing um, because it just felt so awesome and powerful. Um, shortly after that, we started accelerating, um, heading uphill, and the first stage was, I would say, fairly smooth. I mean, there was a little bit of rumbling going on, but pretty smooth. And uh, a couple minutes after launch, when the first stage separated, we definitely felt that. That was pretty cool. And then we knew coming up was the second stage light, and that was going to kind of be a nice kick in the pants. So we got to experience that MVAC engine lighting and, uh, and then kind of a little thrust back in our seats and then pure acceleration for the next, you know, six and a half minutes or so. Um, and it was a bit rumbly, I think. Uh, on the, it kind of was like, I think Megan said it the other day, it's like uh, kind of being on a rocky road in a, in a vehicle. It just kind of felt like this rumble for about six and a half minutes as we increased our speed and uh, 
got up into space, you know, about eight and a half minutes or so or nine minutes after launch. Pretty spectacular. Were there were there any surprises? And, and you mentioned the acceleration, Shane. I mean, at the shuttle, you guys were limited to about three Gs, I guess, on launch. Uh, how does it compare acceleration-wise? And again, were there any surprises, things you didn't expect? Yeah, and this one towards the end of the second stage, we got up to about four and a half G. So that was a little obviously more than we had on shuttle. Uh, but it was a great ride, very smooth. I don't remember any surprises, except we were just all very happy. And if you couldn't tell from my call downs during the uh, ascent, uh, we were all pretty excited to be on orbit again and, and feel that incredible acceleration. You know, I mentioned uh, it's been a busy couple of days in space. Last night, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 with another 60 Starlink satellites on board. And as you guys know better than me, probably, a lot of companies are getting ready to put up mega constellations. That's raised at least some concern uh, out there about collisions, you know, increased space debris, that sort of thing. You guys had a false alarm after you got to orbit. It turned out to be nothing, but uh, it certainly made folks think about it again. How worried uh, should we all be about the increasing number of small satellites in low Earth orbit and, the, I guess, the increasing possibility of space debris that could pose a threat down the road? That's a great question, Bill. It's definitely something that um, we need to keep a careful eye on and keep aware of where all these things are and the best ways to track them and how to get the information, you know, to the people that need it. Um, it was quite an event for us. You know, we were kind of winding down for the evening and uh, getting ready to go to bed, rolled out our sleeping bags and gotten into our, our sleepwear and when we got the notification um, that we needed to get in our suits. So it was a, a very busy 20 minutes for us. Um, but Fortunately, we had done those kinds of drills to get into our suits really quickly. We did it. Uh, we got there just in time, uh, just in time for them to call us out that it had been a false alarm. So we felt like um, we we had what we needed, and um, we felt like the team handled it really well. But it's definitely something that, as you know, a spacefaring nation, uh, and and really for around the world, we're going to need to uh, keep each other apprised of what's out there and how to avoid it uh, as the space gets more and more crowded. I'll copy that. Um, I'm going to stick with the busy time and space angle. You know, last night China launched the core module of its new space station, and they don't plan anything on the scale of the ISS, but it should be state of the art. Um, not asking a political question here, but, but I'm just wondering how you guys see this era right now. I mean, I guess you could look at it as a new space race or a new competition in space, or, or do you think it's a case of the more the merrier? Yeah, I, I tend to go with the latter there. Um, the more people involved in space, it just helps all of our industries. And uh, that's you know, that's pr proved true with the commercial crew program that we're on right now. Um, just more companies got involved, and then now we've got you know, private companies flying us up here to the space station, so that's pretty cool. And then the other countries obviously getting involved now as well. So uh, for me, the more the merrier in the space business. Your flight, uh, looking ahead a little bit, your flight clears the way for the Inspiration4 mission this fall from SpaceX when four non-professional astronauts are going to be flying. They're not coming to ISS, of course, but uh, it does seem that, this, that there's some kind of a, a new era in commercial space flight dawning. Um, what are your thoughts about non-professionals in orbit? Is that a concern, or, uh, you know, is it a case of it's about time this, this far into the program? How, how do you see that? Well, Bill, I think, you know, we, we love being in space so much. We enjoy it so much. Um, and it, it really is something I think we think more people, it would be great for more people to be able to experience um, and to keep pushing the boundaries of what we're able to do. And so I think that, you know, I love the name of the mission, Inspiration4. Of course, part of our mission as astronauts is to try to inspire people, um, you know, inspire the next generation of explorers. And I think that, you know, we're engineers, so maybe we're not always great with words and we're not, you know, we're not poets and we're not writers. Um, so I think it's really neat that we're sending people who, you know, whose passion is science communication, who is, well, not we're not sending, but, but people, these people are going and going to experience some of the same things that we're experiencing, and they're going to be able to share it in a different way maybe than, right. than we normally do. And so I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, it is very interesting, like you said, non-professionals, uh, non-professional astronauts going into space. We've been through the training that they're going to go through. They'll go through uh, a modified version, of course, because they're not 
docking with the International Space Station. But we know um, how thorough the training was. We've given them a lot of feedback on the training and worked together to, to craft a training program that works really well for us. And so um, I think that these folks going through the training are going to get a lot out of it, and SpaceX will be responsive to what they need. Hey, I've got to wrap it up here. I'm out of time. I just want to thank you guys for taking the time to chat. I was going to ask you about uh, getting a Russian director and actress aboard the station this fall, possibly. I mean, that's along those same lines. And Megan, uh, uh, you're not. You got any cool socks to show us today? Here we go. Here you go. <laughs> that's great. Thanks, guys. Enjoyed talking to you. Thanks a lot, Bill. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to CBS News. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.